So earlier today I went out and found some old rustic looking lumber. Found this here 2x3. It's about 7 feet long. And this 2x12 um, that I'll be able to rip and get two out of. Decided I'm going to make this case a foot tall total. Which amounts to after um, the sides are done. The sides will be pretty much three boards tall. So I have everything laid out here. Got my tape measure. I'll show you what we're talking about here. So we need two 26 inch boards. Well, actually, I need six of them total. Two if I was making one of these. But since mine's going to be taller, I need six of these total at 26 inches. And then the bottom and the top, they're, um, let's go the other way so you can see, pretty much two foot tall. So I'm not going to have enough lumber from one pallet, so I'm going to have to tear another one down. So our top and bottom boards are going to be 24. The front and the back are going to be 26. So I'm going to cut some lumber for the sides and the front and the back. I'm going to cut my corner blocks. These here originally are one by two with half inch rope. I'm going to make mine one and a half by two um, for the three quarter rope. So what I'll do, since this is really two and a half dimensional, I'm going to end up ripping a half inch off of this board. So let's get some lumber cut and then um, we'll come back. saws okay this is a rip saw this is made for ripping with the grain of wood for example I want to rip this two by three into why don't I just use dimensional numbers this one and a half by two and a half I want to cut to one and a half by two so I'm going to cut a half inch off of this I'm going to use a rip saw because I'm ripping with the grain of wood to cut a board to length, you use a cross-cut saw. This is a cross-cut saw. And you can see that's your standard cross-cut saw. It's what they look like. It has a decent amount of set to it. This is what a rip saw looks like close up. You can see the teeth are much, much more aggressive. And if you try to cross-cut with this, you're not going to have a lot of luck. If you try to rip with a cross cut saw, you're going to be cutting all day. So there's the difference. I'm going to rip these four corner posts for the first crate. Got all the rest of the lumber cut up. Then we're going to cut the notches for the rope handles. And we'll get to that. That'll be next. Now to cut this trough out for the rope, I'm going to cut down uh, three quarters of an inch deep at three inches from the top and three and three quarter inches from the top. That'll give me a rectangular trough through here. Now when you have these cut, come here you tears. When you have both of these cut down to the line, you just take your wood chisel with the flat side down. And uh, you just set it on that line there and just uh, give it a little love tap straight in there. Of course, clamp this in something. Duh. Just take your chisel in there like that. Just tap it with a wood. I use a, a wood mallet that I made. But you don't want to use a metal hammer on your wood chisels. It's just not the hot setup. Just smack that in there a little bit. Drive it in from the other side. And this will just pop okay. up. 
<laughs> so the way I'm going to band these is with a piece of welding wire. This is TIG wire. You could use whatever wire you want to use. And you can actually do whatever you want to do. You don't even have to band them. But I'm going to band mine. Just going to bend this around here. Because they're um, pegged with a nail inside this corner block. There's a nail that goes right down through this. But if you pull hard enough, you could just pull that right through the nail. I imagine on the synthetic ones, they just melt the end, but I don't want to tear it apart to find out how they did it. I'm just going to do it my way. Bend this around here a little bit more. Then I'll pull that electrical tape off that they had. Something like this. It doesn't have to be perfect, because, I mean, you're not going to see it anyways. Get in there, mate. There we go. I'll just cut it off here. Smush it. You gotta smush it. Come on, get in there, you call me. You could also take a hammer to this if you wanted to and smush it down that way. Really, all this does it keeps it from unraveling. Get in there. That's good enough. Boom. Then you have something like this. See? Ba -ba 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 -ba. Quick update. You can see the notch here in my corner blocks. Got the rope in there. Nail right through where the rope goes. Nails in through here. Now the side I did first. That's, uh, yeah, this one. Um, didn't pre-drill any of them. You can see I had some splitting on this hardwood. These slats are hardwood. I think they're like red maple or something. So the opposite side I went and I pre-drilled the holes down all the way through. Nailed it, cinched the nails, just like factory. And in the back, you can see our nail job there. That's this nail here through the end grain of the side of the side panels, and then two into the pine all the way down, same on the other side. So these ones I pre-drilled all the way through, all the way down, about the depth of um, uh, 3 32nd drill bit, and then just ran my two and a half inch nail down in there. No, they're shorter ones from the pallets, I'm sorry. And then these I just pre-drilled through the actual hardwood and then ran them into the pine. So that's that, and uh, yeah. So I'm going to have to tear another pallet apart to do my top and the bottom. But then, um, so they're going to be about that tall. And then you can see there's going to be a little bit sticking up. I'll lop that off of the saw um, all the way around, top and bottom. And then um, that's that. Now this side here I didn't do last night. The spreader. I had a spreader in there because it wasn't entirely, it was like the sides were like bowed in a little bit whenever I put those slats on. So, when I got up here, the slat was sticking up a quarter of an inch past the top of this box. So I just took and uh, scribed a line on both sides, quarter inch, and I'll take a hand plane and plane that down to the line. Then the plain side, the, the, the smooth side, you know, I'll put on the bottom and then it'll be just like that with the rough side up and it'll look legit too legit to quit and then we're gonna make some tops and bottoms because I haven't decided if I'm gonna use some Walmart hasps and bend them or if I'm going to try to source some original NOS hardware which is what I would prefer to do um, so the sides are on you see, uh, as I said, splayed these nails. 
got the bottom on. Let's uh, sort of do this one handed. So let's just take a look at the bottom. Got the bottom on. Now these turned out to be 23. So the final width of the case is 26 minus the two two by fours on the ends gives us uh, 23 three inches these are one and a half wide of course and then um, made my top so two bands now I took to make the bands I took one of these pallet boards and ripped it right in half and uh, squared everything up set it on here and squared everything. so I decided to take the hinges off of my other bubble case after all I call it a bubble case because they took a flawless ammo crate and painted the whole thing this brown shit brown color inside and out otherwise it's a flawless ammo box anyways to me it's just a brown box now so I took the hinges off of it noticed that because it's flawless the hinges are in impeccable brand new condition and they are offset let me see if I can get it right so you can see they're offset, you see. Now that, that, that brings up a problem for me because I made my lid exactly the size of my box. When actually, it's gonna sit forward just a little bit, about 3 16 with these hinges. I'll put down here. That. Okay, so that's where it's pretty much gonna sit, right there. Now, we got a lip under the front edge here. So what I'm gonna do is mount the lid, mark this with a pencil, turn the lid up, and plane it down to the line. That way, if it's a little bit wonky, then that'll that'll make up for it. And I'll have to cut these uh, chamfer the box here for the two front hinges. But yeah, we're getting there. Oh, and I also might chamfer these corners here with the hand plane. You just measure in. I might knock a half inch off of here. So you'd measure it. Now, maybe three eighths. So strike a line three eighths here. Strike a line three eighths here. And then plane down to your lines. All the way around. And I might do a half inch here on these corners this way. That'll finish up the outside of the box and I'll be on to stenciling the front and the ends. I have to, I'm going to have to make a custom ordinance tag for the sides and over here somewhere on the front. And then um, then we're done and I can move on to something else. Alright, so here's the last part of this video. Uh, most of the stenciling's done. Let's close this lid here. What do you guys think? Not too bad looking, huh? Looks pretty good. It'll haul some goodies. Got some shavings in there. Oh, they're from plane in that. Okay, yeah. So here we are. Uh, knock these corners off. Easy pleasy. Um, my front hinges didn't quite fit without notching out this lid, so I just took a rasp to it. I just marked it. Marked it on either side, took the rasp to it, cut it to fit. Boom, done. So let's take a look here. Sideboards 26 inches. Bottom boards 23. Foot wide, foot deep, foot tall. Uh, pretty easy construction. You just uh, a lot of nailing. I used most of the nails that I got out of those darn pallets. Got to do a little more stenciling on the back and the sides. But there we are. There's an ammunition box that's uh, about three times as tall. Same construction. Fill it full of goodies. And made out of recycled pallet boards. How about da? How about da? See you next time.